okay this video is about percentages we're going to talk about compound interest apply percentages to compute compound interest we had already discussed simple interest now we would extend that to compound interest okay. this video number 18 part 4 of 6 I've divided the video in six parts and this is the fourth part in that series okay, let us continue here let us continue now we look at next section here and next section is compound interest we have already discussed percentages and some examples and also we've seen simple interest and we'll see a compound interest and so what that is okay investment returns and discounts will be discussed later interest what is that what's compound interest in this case interest earned on principal in one term is added which is called compounded to the principal for the next term okay in next term principal is a higher value than it was in the previous term okay let's continue how is that different from simple interest in simple interest a borrower pays the interest at the end of the term and in compound interest borrower rolls over the compounds which is compound the interest earned into principal for next term term here means that you term of the interest rate, interest rate like six percent per year two percent per month extra in two percent per month would be uh, the term would be two one month and six uh, percent per year would be term would be one year okay let's continue examples treasury bond inter paid interest periodically so it does has simple interest situation and it does not compound it does not roll over the interest into the principal and it's a simple interest situation okay as e saving bond double e savings bond roll the interest into principal that there's a compound interest case okay let's continue a time deposit usually uh, roll the interest into principal okay and uh, in usa they call it certificate deposits and in india i believe they call them fixed deposits and uh, most some other countries might too uh, I'm going to look at example again from the same book figuring okay a three thousand dollars is lent at four percent per year interest rate with interest paid and compounded quarterly okay? so how much interest does the lender earn in one year okay so principal value is three thousand dollars we just got from here okay interest rate at first quarter is one it's a four percent per year and it's which would be equivalent to one percent per quarter okay so one percent of three thousand dollars is thirty dollars okay just move the decimal place to the left by two okay now principal value is at the end of first quarter is three thousand dollars by principal and thirty dollars is the interest we add add the interest to the principal and now new principal value is three thousand dollars and thirty cents okay and interest at second quarter would be at the end of the, for second quarter would be one percent of three thousand and thirty dollars okay which would be three thousand and thirty cents okay it's one percent uh per quarter okay? so that would be thirty dollars and thirty cents okay? now new pv would be three thousand and sixty dollars and thirty cents okay three zero six zero decimal point three zero okay so that's new pv going forward for the into third quarter interest at the end of third quarter would be one percent of that okay thirty dollars and sixty cents i just rounded that up and that's it this three here did not show up in the inter, uh, interest rate here in USA the smallest unit of currency is at one cent which is hundredth of a dollar okay let's continue here new PV is I add thirty dollars sixty cent to three thousand sixteen dot thirty which comes out to three thousand ninety dollars and ninety cents okay? let's continue here 
interest at the end of fourth quarter would be on this is say now this is the principal value going to fourth quarter and interest one is one percent of that which will be thirty dollars and ninety cents ninety one cent which again we rounded them up okay if this was a nine tenth of a cent become a one cent and that's thirty dollars and ninety one cents we just round it in okay so New principal value is add this two number together three zero nine zero dot nine zero and plus thirty dollars and ninety one cents. I got a three one two one dot eighty one. So we have three thousand one hundred twenty one dollars and eighty one cents. This is the final value, and some folks might call it a principal value, call it final value F B. Okay. Total interest earned is. Three one. This is the money was lent, and this is the money was paid out to, to pay off the interest uh, loan. So three one two one decimal eighty one minus three thousand is one hundred twenty one dollars and eighty one cents. If you add this number together instead of interest thirty dollars to thirty dollars thirty cents, then add thirty dollars sixty cent thirty dollars ninety one cent. That should also come up. Let's make some observations here. Question, did we, you notice we kept computing new principal value after interest was paid out? Yes, we did, and that is the compounding. So what we are doing is we're compounding the interest paid into the new principal. We're adding that interest, rolling the interest paid into the principal, and that's we're compounding the principal here, okay? Question, is there another term for upgraded PV? Yeah, in some circles it's a final value. So instead of at least the last value when paid out might be called final value. In the intermediate updated principal value is still updated principal value. Okay. In the final value paid out is you know, may be called final values in some circles. Okay. Let's continue. Let's see where the use compound interest is used. Example. In USA, most accounts compound daily, okay, and banks usually quote the interest in terms of annual percentage yield, known as by APY. So, okay, in uh, USA, most banks compound daily, and the on a savings account, interest is quoted as annual percentage yield, also called by APY. Let's continue here. Installment payments. Banks use compound interest to compute periodic payments of loans like auto loans and home mortgage loans, etc. And that's usually true in USA because I, I'm not familiar with the other countries, so I, I have no idea how they do it. There might be some exception. Islam does not allow payment or receipt of interest income, and some banks make alternate arrangement to serve that segment of population. And there are some banks in New York, they do that and have some uh, different arrangements for the mortgage loans, okay? at least for mortgage loans. Okay? So banks use compound interest to compute periodic payments of auto loans, mortgage loans, and other uh, term loans. Okay? Let's continue here. Investment. If an investment grows the annual rise rate of 10% a year, at that rate, $1,000 will grow in a three years to $1,331. Okay? That's a, with a application of the compound interest. So thousand dollars plus hundred dollars for the first year, hundred ten, ten percent of this running sum here. Okay, for the second year and third year, ten percent of the running sum of first three term is one twenty one. It's a one three three one. And when we add, okay, so this is the final value one three three one, and the interest is three hundred thirty one dollars. One thousand was the principal original principle. Okay, let's continue. Let's do some exercises for interest uh, computations. Okay. Question, what's the, the first exercise is, what's the simple interest rate on interest on PV or is $10,000? Rate is 5% per year and for two years. Period is two years. We say 5% per year and two years. So number of terms is two. Okay, let's continue here. Next question, Comp compute compound interest on principal value of $500, rate is 10% per year for four years, okay? When interest is compounded yearly. So at the end of the year, 
interest rolls into the principal. Interest is compounded to the principal. Okay, let's continue here. Problem three, what simple interest of principal value is, what's the simple interest on principal value of $600, rate is 1% per quarter, and a period is one year, which is four quarters. One year is four quarters, okay. okay let's just continue here, simple interest, not compounding, simple. Uh, challenging problem, Sam borrows $1,000 to return $2,000 at the end of seven years. What's the annualized interest rate on Sam's transaction? Okay. Here, it's a compounding interest with a little twist, okay, which is, uh, it doesn't tell you the rate. You have to compute that. It tells you what the final value is and what the initial value is. Principal value is $1,000. Final value is $2,000. Number of years is seven. Interest rate is not given, okay? And, okay, let's continue here. Let's look at references here. Okay. First reference is Vedic Math Teacher's Manual, Volume 1. This is Elementary Teacher's Volume, and it's by Ken Williams, and you can find it at VedicMaths.org. PDF form is available for free, and print form you can purchase. Let's continue here. Second reference listed is the common reference, that's the primary reference, Vedic Mathematics by Bharti Krishna Tirthaji, and that is the primary reference on the Vedic Math. Tirthaji is a founder of the Vedic Math. Let us continue. Now here is Discovery Vedic Math by Ken Williams. It's a most complete authoritative and consistent notations, and this book is organized by sutras. Let's continue here. Vedic Math for Schools in three volumes by James T. Glover. Mr. Glover used these books in his school. They were easy to read, very complete, not as complete as Williams' book is, and contains significant geometry, which I have not covered at all. Let's continue here and figuring by Kuntala Devi. I used some of the exercises from this uh, Glover's book and I used some of the examples from this book figuring. Let us continue here. 